Okay, this video is going to be a debugging of a Kenmore gas oven. In this case, it's model 790.7942 Kenmore Elite Gas Range. The symptom was the oven's not working. Uh, the stove top does work and the broiler is working, but the oven part is not working. I have taken off the door and my user manual does show how to remove the door. That worked out fine. Uh, then I removed uh, the uh, floor, which is that metal piece at the bottom. I did have to take off these thumb screws, which I could also take off with a screwdriver. And then I took off the heat spreader, which is that metal plate. And in this case, these were the screws. These were quarter inch hex. And they were also um, one of these square bit drives, which I have used uh, both of these tools in order to get those off. I, had them available. Now this is what I left with. I can see the burner. Okay, now the broiler I, burner, I can see that even without taking anything off. So my suspicion was, of course, that there was a problem with the ignition. This is my first oven that has the electronic ignition. Previously, I would have had one with a pilot, and this type of symptom would have been that the pilot might have gone out. Um, and you'd relight the pilot, okay, if um, the pilot was, for some reason, totally not working, you might still be able to get the stove to work by using a match, for example. But, in this case, none of that applies, okay. Uh, my old troubleshooting book uh, for ovens would be my old fix it yourself manual and it does have a section on solving problems with gas range but it does not include the electronic ignition system so this didn't really help me I might have at one point owned a Kenmore service manual but I couldn't find it and I might never have had that particular one. So in this case, I'm kind of left to looking on the internet for some debugging help, which I did find on a various site. And this is basically what they recommend. So now that I have observability, let me demonstrate, for example, what happens when I use the broiler. Let's say I hit broil and the start. I just turned the broiler on. Now I'm just going to observe what happens with the broiler element. Now, this can be done with the door closed or open because I've tried it both ways. It gives the same result. So I left the door off because I can see it a little bit easier. Okay. Now you can see the glow. See that orange glow? Okay. That is the igniting element. It's getting hot, and the gas valve now is opening up, and the broiler is on. I've observed this, and I see that as long as the broiler is on, the ignition element is also on. You might think, well, you only need the ignition element to get it started. After that, you don't need it, so why does it stay on? Well doesn't need to be on but that's just the way the system is okay turns out from what I read on the internet uh, the ignition element is in series with the gas valve so for the gas valve to be on current has to be going through the ignition element if, and if the ignition element has failed such as an open circuit which is a way in which these particular elements can fail then the gas valve will never open and it won't work okay now that's an observation okay let me turn that off 
uh, stop. Another thing, of course, you want to check is that the uh, burner on the top works, which it does. That's got the electronic ignition and it's got the spark that you can see. Now I'm going to turn on the uh, other. I'll put on the so-called bake. We'll put bake and we'll push start. Okay. Now the idea here is when it's in the bake mode, the lower part should be working. I apologize, this hasn't been cleaned in a while. Um, but now what I find here, which is completely consistent with the fact that the oven's not working, is that nothing happens. So there's a good chance that the ignition element is an open circuit. It's never heating up, and so the gas valve never opens up. Um, you might find, for example, in your troubleshooting that the ignition element is actually glowing a little bit, but it still doesn't ignite. Then you have a situation where the igniting ignition element might be weak, too weak to work. But in this case, it's easier than that because it's not glowing at all. There's probably no current going through it. So what I'll do is I'll remove it, then I'll ohm it out, see if it's an open circuit. I could compare it to the upper one, but I, I don't want to take something out that I don't need. I'm just going to ohm it out. If I can find a spec on its resistance value, I could use that. I'll use the pause function here so you can see that. Uh, I will disconnect the oven before removing it. In this particular case, the oven, the plug of the oven is in this cabinet next door, so I don't need to pull the oven completely out to unplug it, okay? You might want to check that. I don't like to do a lot of extra things I don't need to do because I don't want to break anything accidentally, okay? So now I'm going to use pause and I will remove that ignition element. Okay, I've taken off the two bolts holding this element and you can see I've also disconnected the power so those lights are not on. I'm still going to need to disconnect this electrically. Okay. And I'm going to have to stick my head in the oven quite a ways to try to find out how to disconnect it, where to disconnect it. And I don't have the manual, so I'm hoping I can disconnect it here. Don't have to pull the whole thing out, but we'll see. I'll use pause again. Okay. And then give you an update. Okay, I found the other end of this uh, connector for the igniter. I had to remove the lower drawer. The secret to removing it is to push down on this, on the right side, and to push up on the left side. It's uh, a little counterintuitive, maybe, because they operate differently uh, uh, after almost possibly breaking it. I did try that. I later then looked through the manual, the user guide, and it sure enough had the instructions on removing the bottom drawer. Okay, now uh, I also had to disentangle the connector from a, uh, a restraint that it went through a loop where it was a bundle. There was a little wire loop. Uh, after I got that through there, uh, it now I should be able to remove it. I'll just use pause here. Okay, now I've pulled the connector up through, and now I'm going to be able to test the igniter. Uh, I should say I don't see any obvious crack. In the igniter, I can't be 100% sure that there's a problem with it, so I'm going to try to test the resistance now. Um, I did pull the stove out from the wall because initially I couldn't get this bottom drawer off. And I wasn't convinced that that was going to be the secret uh, to be able to remove the connector. I thought there might be a back panel. So I pulled it out. I did take off a back panel, but I realized... That did not give me access. There was still further 
panels. Then I decided uh, upon looking through what I could see in the back that yes, if I was able to take the bottom drawer out, that should do it. And then I pursued that more diligently. And now I'll hit pause and I'll set up from my own measurement. Okay, I am measuring ohms. I do have these connectors. I am able to make connection to these two terminals. I, I can't do it on camera, so, but when I have the camera off. With those, I'm still getting overload, which means I'm getting an open circuit. Now, I could look at this more carefully to see if I can find a crack. Since it's an open circuit, I might be able to see a crack, but I don't see one here. But I'm going to check what documentation I can find, if any, on what this impedance should be, and then I'll conclude whether or not this is definitive. I'll hit pause again. Well, here's the update. Uh, what I found on the internet was that the impedance should be somewhere between 0 and 1100 ohms. And the example they gave used an igniter that looked a lot like this one, and it was showing 68 ohms. So this one is coming through as overload, complete open. So almost certainly this is bad. I did find on the Kenmore Sears Parts Direct uh, this model, not this uh, replacement one, but it was cost $128. So I'm going to check more carefully for a compatible um, no-name brand, not on the Sears website, just to see what I can do. Now I just have to try to procure the part. So that's the end of the video, um, and I hope this helps.